sneakerhead. A sneakerhead, man. A sneakerhead to me is someone whose life completely revolves around sneakers. It's on top of like what release dates are coming now. Like, From the art on their wall, the tattoos on their body, like. You can be a sneakerhead without even purchasing a sneaker. For me, it's like childhood stuff. They just want to be around shoes and want to be a part of the culture. The sneakerhead knows the history and the lineage of a certain silhouette or colorway. You know, has like a connection to the sneaker. But mostly I think it's just a person who's about that sneaker culture. The only thing that they care about in this world is sneakers. Hi Beast. Oh man. Oh. They're lame, yo. Um, High piece is the worst thing you can be. You know, there's people that are like Puma heads, there's people that are Nike heads, there's people that are like Adidas heads, and they've been rocking since day one. But a high piece will ruin your chances of getting, you know, a coveted pair, something that really means something to you. And all of a sudden, now that it's a trend, now that it's a trend, I'm gonna rock on the Adidas wave now. I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna do the Puma wave. I'm gonna do the Nike wave, just cause it's hot now. The hype beast knows that it's going to be popular or it's going to be sought after. Who rides a trend? They're not in it to like chase after that moment that you missed. But they have no history behind it, no nothing. It's just, yo, those is hot. Why, why are they hot? They know it's hot, so they're gonna do it. I don't know, cause they just hot, yo. Like it builds so much hype, cause they wear it. But then at the end of the day, they they don't care for it. If you don't really have a definition or explanation on why you think something's hot, and you're just going based off of what someone said, like these should be hot, that's a hype beast, and they're they're like the bottom feeders of sneaker culture. My name is Esteban Serrano and I'm a content creator for Fuse.TV. Well, my career started at MTV. I used to be a producer on a show called TRL. Sneakers had a lot to do with the allure of hip hop. Sneakers were always around hip hop. It is the most hip hop thing in this world to me. So that had a huge impact on what I was going to pursue as a career. And then once I got into a position to create content around sneakers, was you know kind of when everything came full circle for me and I was able to create a show called Soul Searching that we do on Fuse.tv. Soul Searching is a story about going after and trying to uncover these, these things and these stories that are beyond what color a sneaker is. My name's Stan Chan. I'm a photographer for Packers Shoes, and I also do freelance stuff on the side and creative work on the side as well. I was in college for music. I was sitting in uh, in the lunchroom with my boy. We had like a bunch of different random items, like wallets and like hats and stuff. So we started taking pictures on our phone. So then later that weekend, I'm like, yo, I'm gonna try and take some photos like outside of like my I'm t neck. I'm gonna walk around and just take pictures on my phone. I think it's deep, but like it's just therapeutic for me. Like, you know what I mean? You, everybody goes to work and then there's always that little getaway that you have. You know what I mean? Where it's listening, putting on your headphones, and listening to music or something like that. For me, it's, it's just photography. Like, it's like my escape, my expression. Working with Packers is just like, it's just two and two. I love sneakers and I love photography. So it was just like one of those things that just meshed well with me. I shot Action Bronson for Packers. Shot Dave East. My name is Mike Spitz, AKA Mr. Throwback. I sell vintage sports apparel. Started selling at uh, Hell's Kitchen Flea Market in Manhattan. I was living home with my parents at the time and I was just like hoarding stuff in, their, in my parents' basement. I collected like basketball cards and starting lineups and NBA jerseys. That was just like my childhood bedroom. You know, we've been here four years. I wanted like a one-stop shop where you come in, you can maybe get a pair of kicks, a hat, and a jacket, and then literally walk out the door. And I feel like a kid every day in my own store. I think this is what I want to do forever. My name is Malcolm. I do custom sneakers. I manage uh, a men's boutique in Passaic, New Jersey, called The Sneaker Studio. Custom sneakers I've been doing 
for about almost two years now. A friend of mine, um, he hit me up one day. Yo, I hate my job. I wasn't really feeling my job at the time too. He was like, listen, I'm gonna start my own men's boutique. Can you help me? And helping turned into, all right, I'm gonna pay you a few dollars here. A few dollars here turned into work four days a week. Working four days a week turned into now, yo, you manage that place and we travel. So it's been a, a journey, but it's the best thing that ever happened to me. My inspiration is art and just looking at a shoe and saying, yo, I think I could freak those, you know what I mean? Like, I think I could make those different. I want to give you something where you can wear and people be like, yo, did windows come out? Nah, these, these one-on-one. -on -one. And it's like, who did that? Malcolm did that. Wow. I love it, man, you know? I'm, I'm up late nights doing this. And, you know, not, there's nothing better, man. It's a Nets. What's going on? It's your boy, Dallas Penn. I'm having fun out here. Sneaker Con, the greatest sneaker show on earth. The number one sneaker convention. They need to understand why we are here and why we do this. It's not because we don't have other things to do with our money. This is what we do. This is our hobby and this is our life. Because when we were little, man, we always wanted to rock these kicks. You know? And like, you know, we couldn't afford them back then and now we can. Yeah, sneakers is everything. This is the culture right here. Everybody in the culture. The high beasts, the old heads. If you like sneakers, you're here in this building. All kinds of shoes. All kinds of lifestyles, like get in where you fit in. The first sneaker that I can remember that I absolutely had to have was the first Iverson question. That was the first one. I was in high school, I'm from Philly. Like that sneaker was my Jordan. For a lot of people who grew up loving the Bulls, I grew up hating Michael Jordan. I think it was the bread 13s, man. Cause I started late on the Jordans. And I'm like, yo, what are these? Like, these are crazy. Was, uh. Yo, he changed the game, man. The most influential player ever. You can't even question yeah. the influence. Just turn the NBA on right now and you see a million Iverson clones. I had Jordans before that, but I think the Aqua Ace was the ones that was like, yo, that's it right there. So I hated that man with a passion. The Aqua 8s, I love those. Um, I just love that colorway, like the old Hornets colorway. I think it's so dope. But then I wore uh, Concord 11s to my wedding. I have respect. I mean, he's the GOAT, like, yeah, let's yeah. be real. But I only got like him. So the Iverson came out and that was a sneaker that I wanted so bad. Now I have every Iverson that ever comes out. See the silhouette or the, or the colorway of it. If it's both, then it's all it's an automatic cop. Nothing like that side angle, you know what I'm saying? Like you just stand there and your, your your jeans just lay right nicely on it. I love when 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 it's not just normal leather. That's my favorite part of a shoe. Air Trainer One is my favorite model. Designed by Tinker Hatfield in 1987, same year I was born. And it was just something about it. Like it was a super lightweight. Especially for that time, like, like it's nothing like looking at like a Jordan One from the side. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's fly. You know, we all played like basketball in these like you know rec leagues by our town and stuff like that. And uh, I had the Jordan 14s. I'm in like 11th, 12th grade, and I would bring the sneakers to the game. Like I wouldn't wear them. I would just bring them, lace them up, and like feel like Michael Jordan. The Three Little Bears, the Mid Bear, Nike SBs. It was beautiful, man. That to me is like, if I can get that shoe, I'll give, I'll give all the rest of them away. It's more accessible now. Just go on Instagram, 
It's like 30, 100 different stores. Be like, Yo, we're releasing these on Saturday for this much amount of money. Yeah. For the... So it's like, it's easier. It's a lot more accessible, which is cool in one sense. But to me, it's kind of, it's kind of whacking another because for me, what made, what made like, at least the sneaker culture so cool was the hunt to find a pair of sneakers that you know not that many people were gonna have at a certain point, you know? So the hunt of getting them was like a beautiful thing because now everybody had a story. I mean, when if me and you had the same pair, me and you would have a different story. If I didn't have Instagram, I don't know where I'd be. That platform is amazing because it's literally a picture and you could just write like for sale, you know, and literally someone could just hit you up and the transaction is done. It's bananas. My favorite part of sneaker culture on social media is the art that comes out of it. Be it like from these customs, that people are doing with like, you know, repainting their own sneaker. People creating art out of the sneakers. Cause let's be real, sneakers are art. My sneakers, they were featured on um, nicekicks.com, which is like the biggest sneaker blog known to man, known to any sneaker head. Creating your own content and in your own lane is more is is more valuable now than it's ever been before. If I could give advice to anybody who wants to pursue a career in sneakers but don't have the, the surface skills and ability of what they think is available. I would tell them first just indulge in it like every aspect of it like you know sneaker companies need lawyers sneaker companies need accountants those same people who work in those departments are a part of sneaker culture and they're an integral very important part don't worry about just like um you know what trends are hot but worry about like why the trends are hot worry like how that shoe got designed. Like, don't think that any of the things that you're passionate about outside of sneakers don't apply to sneaker culture. Try to figure out every corner of every aspect of that industry or that culture, and then once you know that, then you'll find one out of that, out of everything that you learn that's like, yo, I really like doing this a lot, the most out of everything that's here on this list. And then just, once you find that, then go in on that. But I think for the first thing is just, just indulging it, like have fun, most of all, because you're not having fun and it's, it's not even worth it. Like. And I really tell people that if you really want to do something, just f***ing do it.